Yo, and now what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Recap Corner. Twin Star Axis is this week. We finally get get to see them jump right back into teamwork. And it's actually kind of crazy how that their teamwork actually kind of grows into something beyond what what you would have normally expected expected from this team. If anything, they're actually kind of showing a little bit more of like that little shining spark that actually came up a little bit before the time skip where that where that broken room menial that they kind of put their differences aside and that and, and that actually became a team you actually kind of see that happen again this time with fucking shimon kind of putting like his like i'm above you type of mindset by behind him and him actually busting a sasuke a more genuine sasuke you know and him saying you know what i'm not gonna be that guy i'm gonna help you guys out as as of course this thing it does start off with him with um, with him captured by of course Spider um, uh, Spider Spider Boy, and of course him going through the whole mo motions of saying, well now, for the people who are trapped or who are trapped in my webs, they also sustain damage. However, if I cut these, uh, however, if you're trapped in my wires and I cut it, well then you still get hurt. And of course, uh, and of course. Um, <laughs> Binio and Myra, they both find a way to kind of get around that, per se, of them using this to kind of, well, using this to kind of like, um, to, to cut his thing, save a few people, and also get Shimon safe. So, something that I kind of like. If I can be fair, though, is like, the, uh, if I can be fair, though, I will have to say, though, is that I don't really know why they usually always run out of these, these, well, well, yeah, like, they ran out of a lot of those fucking, um, um, uh, talismans, because at first I was kind of wondering why, why they were giving them all to, to, uh, Myra, but then they kind of broke that down, down, like, well, now she needs all those to kind of, you know, like, heal everybody in, um, uh, um, in the classroom. The problem with that was, though, is that I don't think, as I don't think that from Jump Street that they would have had enough to basically save them if they're using them all one one uh one per person especially since nobody uh nobody in their group specifically knows how to mass heal a whole bunch of people so so that is something moving on to the combat though the combat actually was really was actually really spectacular i mean it's actually nice to see shimon actually go back into like his um, his um, Suzaku mode and him actually kind of used that to drill a hole in a boy boy's chest. However, however, like Rokuro actually pulled out like a actual amazing stop stop here. Not only did like he punch lava like in to Spider Boy's face, destroying him completely. He also destroyed all of his little dolls dolls as well. However. There is one specific thing though, and I'm pretty sure that they already answered this, but, but like, if, but if Chijiwa, if he was strong enough to just come into their world and take over their entire school, and I'm pretty sure that there are other Basara like as this uh, as this goes on, like that's what they're doing, and and also the the um tw um the twelve guardians that they're going in, well the eleven guardians that they're going in, well they're doing a whole bunch of research and stuff, and then they're sort of looking into the missing exorcist. Kind of almost makes you wonder at this point, like what's name can do what say what's name can basically do what what um he did with the dragon spots and just put everybody over there or at least use all or at least find a a lot more a lot more but basara give them the same type type of power he gave chijiwa and then set them uh upon a location and then bam you know like you have that area in um um uh, well you bring miasma to that Location. I'm not sure if they brought it to the location, or, or, or with them coming there, like a piece of the miasma came with them from uh, Magano, or if they pulled that location into Magano and then they just didn't notice. I'm not necessarily sure. I think, I, th I think it's them going there and then um, the Basara crossing over into the real world again and then them bringing that into the world. You know, as far as I know, the only nice one anyway is fucking Suzu, the one. 
uh, the one with her groupie. So I'm kind of liking her so far. But until then, that is what I gotta say about that. Tell me what do you think about this down there in the comment section. Catch you on the next John Grave show. Keep watching anime, keep playing video games. I'm out. Oh, shit. Yo, right now, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Recap Corner. What's going on in this episode of Fairy Tale 514? Yeah, 514. What is going on with our supposed evil, evil, evil Urza? Well, apparently they give us a history lesson. And what is this history lesson? Well, in case of most people, if they don't necessarily know or they went clean over their fucking heads, well, this episode talks about, well, back in the day, years ago, okay, is that that Eileen was 